You're watching Breakfast Television on City TV. Getting people interested in science and learning, that's what our next guest is all about. Jay Ingram is here again talking about this great book series, Jay, you have going on, The Science of Why, Volume 3 of The Science of Why. And here's the cover, and of course you have your little characters that are always kind of walking people through solutions to everyday <laughs> yeah. questions. And I have to ask you right off the get-go here, why, why, why have you dedicated so much of your life to getting people engaged with learning? You know, not not even so, not so much learning, but learning about science. Yeah. And you know, I don't know why I got really interested in it because I actually feel that I didn't have very inspirational science teachers in school, but I just sort of found it really, really cool to learn how things work in nature. And okay. so uh, then somehow, you know, part of me wants to share that. So nice. Yeah, a teacher and a learner at the same time, which is really a cool combination. Yeah, well, right? it, it, you know, I mean, it's fun to yeah. do that, right? It's, uh, writing a book, to me, more of the fun might be in the actual research, finding out answers ah. to these questions than actually writing it. Very good, very good. Well, this is volume three, and it answers questions, everyday questions, like why are some people left-handed, and you know, that type of thing. I want to ask two specific questions, because these are things that my kids and I have talked about. Right. And the, the first one, off the top, is because we have woodpeckers in our neighborhood, yep. why do they not get a headache from the constant drumming against trees or houses, in our case, in our neighborhood? And there's that fabulous footage again. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they should, because they are coming in with a g-force that would make us unconscious wow absolutely like just incredible numbers like a thousand g's and um, so th it's partly the way their head is built they have quite spongy bone in the front of the head to, to absorb forces and when their bill hits the wood or the metal as yes. some woodpeckers do <laughs> um, the the energy sort of flows along the bill and then into the is absorbed by the skull quite a bit but the cool thing is their tongue actually doesn't stop at the back of their mouth it actually curls all the way around the brain really yeah and some people it's sort of hard to evaluate this but if you can imagine its tongue like this yeah and its head in here yeah. then this is kind of securing it right it's not allowing because one of the things we would have is our brain would bounce back off our skull, the skull, right? Yeah. So first, they don't have a lot of fluid in, so the brain is pretty tightly in there anyway, and then it's supported by the tongue. So there you go. Kind of weird. No but, headaches. Uh, well, we don't know that they don't have. <laughs> Maybe headaches. they have constant headaches and they just live with <laughs> Maybe it. Maybe they every just day. are tough. <laughs> <laughs> we're wimpy compared to woodpeckers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the, uh, the next question that we've always wondered, because we, we love to snack on popcorn at home, is like, what actually happens? How does that kernel pop and turn into what we love to snack on? So the, uh, it's actually a pretty cool process. It has to hit 180 degrees Celsius okay. before it pops. And uh, what happens is you have water in there anyway and starch to actually feed the seed if, if it, this were planted. So the water turns to steam, builds up pressure, and it finally blows a hole in the shell of the, of the kernel. And the starch, which is now cooked, is the white stuff, so oh. it comes out. So there's two things. What makes the sound? Yes. It's, it's the, not the cracking of the shell, it's the jetting of the steam through the hole. Okay. So it's like the French scientists liken it to opening a champagne bottle. Oh, the, you get that little pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but the really cool thing is, why does it fly into the air? <laughs> and I thought it was because of that steam. You know, steam jets out, it's like a little rocket. But it's actually the white part that we eat, the starch, that if it's, if it's facing down, pushes down on the surface of the pan oh. and launches itself into it, the air. It jumps. Yeah. Huh. And so, I, you know, that, that, that was some pretty cool research that, in fact, if you'd asked me that question three years ago, people wouldn't have known those facts because they hadn't studied it. There you go. Jay Ingram, The Science of Why, Volume 3, available right now. And it's answers to questions, everyday questions, using science. A pleasure, my friend. Thank, thank, thank you, you for coming in. Thanks Always fun to chat with our science friend, Jay Ingram. Really, really cool, cool stuff. 726, we have a lot more to come this morning on Breakfast Television. Weather, traffic updates, and, of course, all your news headlines. You're watching BT on City.